Hi everyone, this is Trevor from astrobackyard.com and tonight is a very special night because I'm about to go outside and set up my camera and telescope to photograph the Great Conjunction of 2020. Now what is the Great Conjunction? It's an alignment from our perspective of two of the biggest planets in the solar system, Jupiter and Saturn. Now on December 21st, some people say that it's going to look like a single bright star in the night sky, the Christmas star if you will. Now really it's just two planets, two bright planets aligning with each other, but it will look like a single bright star from certain perspectives, depending on how you look at it. Through a telescope, however, you're going to be able to see that it's two distinct planets. Now tonight is December 18th. They are getting closer and closer together each night, but on the 21st of December, they'll be within 0.1 degrees apart, really close together. But tonight might be the last chance I get because of clouds to photograph this event. So hopefully you join me in the backyard as I photograph the great conjunction of 2020 and let's get to it. The Jupiter-Saturn conjunction happens every 20 years, but this year's is extra special. It is the closest observable conjunction since the 1200s. It won't be this good again until the year 2080. Now, of course, from our perspective on Earth, it looks like the two planets are right next to each other, but Saturn is actually 450 million miles away from Jupiter. A lot of people are calling this event the Christmas star because it's going to look like those two planets join to create one superstar in the night sky happening on December 21st, the day of winter solstice here in the Northern Hemisphere. Even though this event is quite observable to many, it still happens in the Western sky. The two planets follow along the path of the Sun and uh, depending on where you live, it could be hard to spot it. It's gonna be rather low in the southwest, and from my backyard, this is the spot where I'll see it. So luckily, it's a clear view to where I have my telescope set up, and hopefully I get a nice, clear path to the two planets, which will be right around this area of the sky. The camera I'm using to photograph this event through my telescope is a different one than I've ever used before. This is a new one, the ZWO ASI 462MC. Now it's a one-shot color camera, and I'll explain why I'm using that in a minute. So this camera has a tiny two megapixel sensor on it. So it just goes into the back of my telescope here using the inch and a quarter adapter. And then I'll focus my telescope on Jupiter and Saturn, which will be on the same focal plane. So the planets are really close together, which is unique because you don't normally get to see these planets at high magnification in the same field of view. But you have to find the right balance between high magnification and, but not going too far, because if you go too deep, of course, you'll have to slew from one to the other. In this field of view on this sensor they'll just barely be both in the edges of the frame I'll have to kind of move around side to side but it still should create that really unique cool opportunity to see them both in the same field at the same time Planetary astrophotography is a lot different than deep sky astrophotography. You use a different camera and a different technique and oftentimes a different telescope. So I'm using a one shot color camera this time and that's not typically the case for planetary. Normally you shoot with a monochrome camera and RGB filters to get that nice detail and create a full color image. But because I have such a short limited window of time and I'm capturing two planets at once, I'm just gonna go for it and shoot in one shot color and just deal with that sacrifice in image quality. Hopefully I can produce a respectable image using this system, but it's a little bit of a different approach than you would normally take for planetary. This really is a race against the clock. So how this is gonna work is I'll use a software called Fire Capture to basically create a video live loop of what the camera sees through the telescope and I'll record that video. After that, I can separate those individual frames and turn it into a single picture. But essentially, I'm recording a video of the two planets through the telescope. I expect to have to move around a little bit. I might have to spend some time looking at Jupiter, photographing that and then move over to Saturn and kind of create the image that way. But as soon as that sun sets, those planets are getting lower and lower into the horizon and I have a very limited time to capture them. 
here is the way the telescope is pointing and it's pointing towards Jupiter right now. So it's pretty low on the horizon as you can see and you might even be able to see that crescent moon up there but I was able to confirm through the finder scope that it is indeed pointing at Jupiter. I didn't see Saturn in there but it was a quick look so now is the really exciting time to see what my field of view is going to be through that camera and to see if I get both planets in the same field of view. Okay so what you're looking at now is Jupiter and its moons through the camera 